it's fun. Actually, that so they're so sick. They think well, it's they that, live off of it. They, they enjoy that's it. how they survive. That's the energy that they live off of, and they live off the torment and tormenting uh, you. And uh, you need to not provide yourself for their pleasure. But yeah, they come and, uh, around as soon as you reject them. They they start coming around. Oh yeah, and it's supernatural. You'll get a phone call out of the blue. <laughs> when you you'll make a decision at, at your home one morning and then the phone will ring it that's where you start recognizing the supernatural thing that's going on and uh accept that yeah it is supernatural yeah they're being alerted by the demonic telecommunication network um that's a cool phrase and, it, and with my case it's something yeah. to- totally unrelated someone totally unrelated contacted me out of the blue Hey, yeah. how's it going? Yeah. You know, it's like yep. it's like, but they were connected to that. And he goes, "Well, here's my number, and here's my. Oh, why don't you give me a call? I've been uh, thinking about you, blah blah blah." But what they're really doing is acting on the demand. In other words, someone else that not the one you broke away from, but somebody else right. then takes their place, and then they get in contact with you, and then the whole game begins again. Yeah, you've got to you you've got to learn how to ignore. The, the physical face, the physical person in front of you, and recognize there's usually a specific demon or a group of demons that are tasked on you. And they will operate through different people at different times. So once you start recognizing the demon that's chasing you around, that's got your number, then you can see it popping up in all kinds of different people. And it'll pop up right in your household. It'll pop up in one of your children or a spouse mm-hmm. if they're available and uh once you start seeing things on that level, then you see what's going on, and it's much easier to uh, protect yourself and to be aware of what's really happening and, and skip the physical it's like you know, with a, identification. It's like with a psychopath. You know, if you have a psychopath in your life, yeah. you know, what they say is, the, and these are, these are just like psychopaths, a little bit different, though, because it's, there, it's not them. You know, the, the uh, reptile seems like a psychopath to us because they're cold-blooded, they have no empathy, you know, they have a hierarchical consciousness. They do what they're told. They take their place. That's reptilian kind of, you know, uh, programming. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, so it, it's, it's, you know, you could call it a psychopath. But in a psychopath, what they say is this, and this is all over the Internet now. A lot of this has gone viral. Uh, what to do when you have a psychopath in your life? And here's the answer. You have to cut all ties, period, yep. if you want to live, <laughs> if you want to survive. Otherwise, yeah, because they won't they won't quit till you're utterly destroyed. Right. In in every respect, they'll destroy you financially, uh, spiritually. They'll destroy your family, your job, everything, everything. Now, I know they're a guy the now that they've taken his kids, and the, they're corrupt lawyers, and the corrupt now ten years doing this. Where people taking pot shots with me, it was more like, you know, with you it was survival um, and and a struggle for money. For me, it's been whether or not they're going to kill me. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a little bit different. It's been like, okay, will I live through the week? Yeah. It's been, you know what I mean? And, and so it's a health issue and then, and then, you know, people plotting, um, bad things. And, and I've, I've had to go off this, like what you're talking about. Exactly. I've had to trust. Okay, Lord, um, you'll protect me. What's uh, greater is he that's in me. That's in the world. And I'm just going to have to go with that. And I've seen others, uh, brother Thomas, that, um, you know, have had serious death, uh, death threats, especially yeah. lately. And, yeah, lately. and up. yeah, it's ramp. As you said, as you predicted, uh, this gang stalking, let's just take the gang stalking. For example, you predicted that this gang stalking was going to go off the hook, off the charts. Right. It would be ubiquitous. It would be everywhere. And it will be the means by which they attempt to keep social order in their minds. But, uh, yeah, just ubiquitous everywhere. And everybody's going to have some sort of experience with it. I mean, it was isolated before, but it's going to be the normal mode of operation of uh, social control. And uh, I'm seeing it now for sure. And uh, they're, they're connected. I mean... You know, the, a lot of this stuff is highly supernatural because they're just like the people wow. doing the stalking are, you know, connected uh, tele- telepathically uh, through the uh, hive mind, you know, through the um, the fourth dimensional um, fallen ones who occupy them. 
you know, occupy human. Yeah. And then they, yeah. they operate like with one voice. And so that's how they can look like they're organized coming around and against you. It's because they, they, what's in them, you know, they've been made to be what, what we call now fit extensions for one of the demonic. One of the greatest secrets to survival that you're just touching on right now okay. that it's hard to believe, but once you believe it, once you see it and, and you accept it, is this supernatural control that happens. See, some people have doubt that this is really happening or that anyone could be that organized or a lot of the synchronicities and coincidences that seem to happen that just seem too bizarre, mm-hmm. but they, they keep happening and, and people doubt because they think, well, no person could devise this, this type of organization. But once you realize it's not uh, natural, it's not a an earthbound type organization. It's supernaturally organized, and that's how uh, these coincidences and uh, uh, well, and what seems like an orchestrated persecution that defies normal human ability. It's because it's not human. It's uh, no. supernatural, and once you start recognizing the supernatural aspect to all of this, to uh, the, the persecution and the torment, uh, when you finally see that for what it is, you, you, um, well, you stop being blindsided, for one thing. You can see it coming. You can see it coming in uh, other people. You can see the, the way that it's organized on a supernatural level. Yeah. And uh, it takes a lot of the punch out of it once you finally accept that that's what's really going on. And they seem, you know, you know, completely unaware because they've given into it. We've always been, you know, our people have always been, uh, there seems to be something else going on. Like, you know, they have a, a thing, a, a communication device within them that's like a DNA thing that's, you know, fit for that. And that DNA is activated by their free will choice to serve that side. So they're just serving the fallen angels, basically. And, um, you know, that's a very powerful uh, group, a third of the of the stars of heaven, as it says in Revelation 12, a third of the uh, angels, you know, rebelling against God, wanting to create their own thing, hybridization, all the stuff that's been going on, uh, the destruction of the genome, both human, plant, animals, so forth, and all of it to, to really, I, I believe they're getting ready for their birthing of a new race. I do believe that, and I believe they want to destroy yeah. this here and get rid of us because we're the earlier model and get ready for the what they would call the third earth age. And the third earth age would be an age of the this this new model, this this triple helix kind of hybrid that is their, you know, what they've been working on for thousands of years, and they want to roll this out. And uh, the funny thing is all the people that have been serving them who are the gang stalkers, they're they're slated for extinction. If they only knew that they are slated for for murder, they're gonna be killed. And in mass, all the ones that serve them are going to be killed because there's no room for them in the new in the new uh, world order that they have planned. Yeah, you know, they're they're cannon fodder. Yeah, they're, gonna, they're being used as cannon fodder, and then they're all going to be wiped out. Yep. And even a lot of the high level operators are going to be wiped out. A lot of these people that have sold their soul for power mm-hmm. and money uh, that are that we see on TV and in the news, these people that think they've got a, a little bed waiting for them once it all settles, most of them are going to be wiped out just as quickly and suddenly just been used. Yeah. And I think this next year, one of, the, one of the new key components coming up for 2012 is this supernatural, occultic, demonic tinge that's going to be infused throughout the populace, uh, like never before, something's something's coming over this next year that uh, like we've never seen, and uh, Amen to that. people are going to have to be tight with the Lord. I mean, prayed up and really living it, not just talking it, not just lo- vaguely. You know, I'm a, I believe in Jesus, not a vague intellectual operation, but you literally are going to have to have the Holy Spirit operating through your hands, your eyes, your mind, your heart, because of what is going to be activated, uh, is, is right now being activated. There's a, in uh, 1988, 
I heard from a, a very inside source on the dark side, uh, <coughs> excuse me, that's connected, that, that interacts with the underworld, that interacts with demonic entities, loves demonic entities, and uh, is tied into the whole Masonic mm-hmm. realm, the whole, the whole shebang. Yeah. Uh, but what he was saying was that in 1988, April 1st, there were there was a whole slew of basically entities born in the flesh that started out completely possessed. Uh, they're not human. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're, they're in human form, but these are not humans, and they were dedicated to Satan. Their parents knew that. Their mothers knew that they were dedicated to Satan. That was they were born into ritual. And they are were specifically tasked with entering the legal field and the medical field for right now. So the, what would these be, like uh, 22 years old, 23 years old? Early 20s right now that are becoming professionals, and their whole mission is to absolutely wreck the biology and law and the whole legal structure of the planet and the whole biology and the medical uh, institution, in the broadest sense, God has created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. Okay, they do have access to some information we don't. It's, I've not found anything that indicates exactly what all information that might be, but obviously they knew that Jesus was the Son of God. So I think. And there seems to be some evidence to support that if you have a very high call on your life, that they know that even as early as when you're in the womb. I think that, and Joyce Myers talks about this a lot, I think that possibly there is some type of mark on you in the spirit and that because they're spirits, they can see it. But I don't know. I can't prove that. Anyway. Okay. Um, Things go right. It's just... It's going to go the way it's going to go. Yeah, it is. And uh, those that are called in the spirit right now uh, have got have got to. Uh, there's not going to be the option of hiding anymore. Everything's uh, being flushed out now, and the mm-hmm. uh, uh, persecution is is well underway, and it was expected. But what is happening in the spirit? Uh, from everything I've been shown lately, what I'm hearing, what I'm seeing, I mean, real m- miraculous uh, stuff. What the what the Holy Spirit is doing right now to call to His people and uh, give them the power and the capacity to make it through this these times that are coming up. Uh, it's the only way that people are going to have any kind of uh, sanity left, any kind of wholeness and peace went and there will be peace going through these storms but um the the spirit's moving right now Uh, big big things are in the offing and uh there's no more i mean we've said this before it's been going on for centuries but uh, i'd say like never before there's no more fence sitting uh for people that are uh, uncommitted to the lord uh, it's it's got to happen right now, and there there is a surge of power in the spirit to to affect that transformation. And then, as you were saying, uh, where a lot of people get hung up is obsessing on the old man, on old sins, on old old problems they've had. You, you don't don't let that old man get back up out of the grave. He keeps <laughs> popping back up, and uh, you turn away from it. You're already healed. You're already forgiven, yeah. and going forward, you've got to look just right into the face of the Holy Spirit and stop looking back because the, the forces, the events that are happening on the ground are, if you're, if you're wavering, you're going to get pulled right into that undertow. And, uh, I mean, we're here. It's, just a, it's, a, it's amazing to watch unfold and, re- and then a way to get off of it. But all of these are, uh, and people have had addictions, they're fighting with those things, but mm-hmm. wait, and w- instead of wrestling with the flesh, instead of trying to use your will to conquer these things, 
people don't have faith. They don't have faith that if they literally, if they just drop all of that, turn and face God, go to Him seriously, cry, plead for His Spirit to come into you, and get in the Word, drench yourself in it, become immersed in all things God, Jesus, Yeshua, all the time. You've got to be immersed in it. If you're not, you're going to be knocked over. You're going to be knocked aside, and you're going to lose it. You're going to get lost, and you're going to get imprisoned. You're going to become burdened. But he, if you do that, if you make that full-fledged decision today and face him, your heart will start to change. He will change you. He will start turning. He will take you away from those sins, from those, those nagging, the thorn in your side. He may leave a little bit, he may not, but he will start to change you. You will start to leave that way of life, that way, those obsessive patterns of thinking that just enslave people. Uh, he, will, he will transform you uh, slowly but surely, steadily. You're going to look back in weeks' time, months' time, and realize you are a different person. You are going in a different direction. Finally, something you've been struggling with for years and years, it's over. You will find yourself going in his direction, and now when you look at what's going to, what's happening in the world and what's about to happen, uh, you know, take it or leave it. It, it, It's, you will have, the Holy Spirit is pouring out a power now that is going to give people the power of peace in the storm, and it is going to be a literal power. This isn't platitudes, and I'm not just talking, I'm not just, you know, giving a, just some pat little sermon that you've heard a million times. I'm experiencing it. It's happening. I'm, I'm witnessing it in other people that I love. Miracles are happening in the Holy Spirit. There is a power coming forth from the Holy Spirit right now that is miraculous. It is transforming minds and hearts, and it, it gives you the power. It is not of this world, and it is a continuous power. It doesn't go away. It's not something that you feel good one day, and now you feel crappy the next day, and then you feel okay the next day. This is something you can latch onto. It's what you've craved your whole life is this steady stream of godly power and ability. It's a, you will be given an ability and a capacity to, to, <laughs> to truly move forward. I mean, the liar loves to steal, and uh, there is a, a, a blessed and holy moving forward. And, and too many people are stuck. They're stuck in the fence. They're stuck in the dark night of the soul. Because they're still toying with the world. They're still in love with the world and and in love with themselves. And they're hanging on to bits and parts of themselves. They've still got some dreams. They've still got some issues that they're trying to cling to and trying to make both work. You know, maybe I can have part of it myself and the Holy Spirit and God. Well, no, you can't. And you can't. It's over. Kill that old man. Let him die. He's dead. He's already dead. He is, she is crucified in Christ. These are not platitudes. It really happens. And when you face the Holy Spirit, especially now, there, there's never been a time like now where this is pouring out in the way that it is because of the circumstances we're in. So it's got a whole unique flavor to it. It's got a whole, it's it suited. The Holy Spirit adapts so that in the times that we're in, it, it can minister to you in these times. Uh, it's not just like uh, ministering to old men in robes, old ancient times in with sandals, uh, it, this is modern times with all the technology, all of the new sins, the new kinds of the new ways to sin. Uh, Holy Spirit is there on top of the whole thing, knows how to work out all of those issues within you. And uh, it, it's modern. It's up to date. It, it's ahead. It's already way ahead. It's already anticipating what your needs are going to be. Uh, there's no other way to get through what is what we're going into right now. And uh, people have got to just stop, uh, stop uh, messing around with it, or you're going to get swept under, because uh, what, what, what's in store is, is going to terrify the flesh. And if you're identified with your carnal self, with your worldly ego, if you're still identifying with that thing and living through it, then that's what they're going to enslave. That's what they're going to imprison. That's what they're going to terrorize. And if that's where your identity is and where your life is, uh, you're going to, you're going to be an in instant hell. I mean, my, my, if you think you're in hell now, you ain't seen nothing yet. Uh, as long as you're identified with that. So you got to come out of that uh, now. I mean, it's time. It's time now because we're very soon upon, upon some just, <laughs> I mean, you think it's bad now. We it, really, what we're going into is just, it, it's going to mortify the flesh. 
you'll be mortified, you'll be terrorized, and well, this... uh, there's no other way. Strongly influenced if there are enough demons in there. Okay? Okay. Children are extremely susceptible to demonic influence. Um, you know, I've talked before about people who have a, a calling for the for work for the kingdom of God and how we've seen case after case after case that anyone who has a very high call in their life, it seems like Satan starts attacking them even when they're in the womb. You know, you hear babies that are born with the cord wrapped around their neck, you know, and wild things like this or somebody tries to kill them when they're two years old and that's all Satan setting them up is what that is. And and I said, Lord, you know, I'd, I'd heard Joyce Meyer say, you know, there's some kind of spiritual mark on us in the womb because somehow the devil knows and he's a spirit. So if it's a mark, he can see it if it's spiritual. And I was talking to, to the Lord about that this last weekend when I was studying. And I said, Lord, what is the deal with that? Is there a mark on us? Because he starts early on us to mess us up where we can't do anything, you know. And what Satan's trying to do, if he can't take you out, is he's trying to mess you up so bad that you won't ever be any good to the kingdom. He's trying to mess you up so completely that you're worthless to the kingdom of God. Okay? But when you give your life to God, he teaches you how to get free, and then he'll turn all the stuff the devil meant for bad to good, just like he did for Joseph. Okay, so I'm sitting there, and I'm going through the books, and I'm making notes on all this, and, and I'm talking to the Lord while I'm doing it, and all of a sudden, he showed me a vision. Just this quick vision in my spirit of how the devil knows when you're called. When you are conceived in the womb, if you have a calling to do kingdom work, you're assigned a bigger angel. There's not a mark on us. The devil sees those angels, and he knows why they're there. So he immediately forms an assignment against the child that's still in the womb was just conceived because there's an angel there and he knows that child's called to do God's work. That's how he knows. And I thought, okay, yeah. He gives his angels charge over us. Nowhere in the Bible does it say we all get the same kind or the same size. Nowhere in the in the word that I found does it say we all get exactly the same kind of angel. The Lord assigns a different kind, a different size of angel to people that are called to do work for the kingdom of God and he assigns them when they're conceived when they're still in the womb so I was happy to find that out because I always wondered about that thing other than the Lord which is how it has been and so in terms of uh, that we're going into an incredible time and a time of the gift of the spirit being unleashed in the believers and, and I believe that's, that's happening uh, I've seen it happen uh, I feel it happening just subjectively I can see where it's going. Uh, it's going to be an incredible, uh, amazing experience, the, the power of the Spirit that is going to come upon sincere yeah. believers, people that are truly wedded to the Lord, uh, the things that they're going to be able to do and are going to be allowed to do in His name are going to be thrilling and uh, miraculous, you know, apparently. And that's what, the, that's what we have to look forward to is... is uh, in the midst of all this, uh, this horrendous situation on the outside. Uh, it just uh, seems a no-brainer to me of what to do to remedy.